Thanks for joining us here on News Today to have a first story. And four people have sustained gunshot wounds following a clash at Posum, a suburb of Boko in the Upper East region. The clash, which we're told happened on Sunday night, according to police, resulted from a disagreement over the renovation of a mosque. The police have made some arrests, but some assemblymen in Boko allege that the police commander is preventing them from seeing their relatives who are in custody. One of them, Sani Kohana, accuses the police commander of pulling a rifle on him when he went to the station to see a relative in custody. Tefuto Kalechi is the divisional police commander in charge. Yes, uh, on Sunday there was a, a gunshot head at the suburb of Boku, known as Possum. There is an old uh, land issue and uh, uh, probably one Malam Abu Bakar and the section of the, the youth in the Boku. What happened was that the Malam has a personal uh, mosque in his house and uh, it has become dilapidated so he decided to renovate it during the renovation some people went and warned him not to continue because uh, he has trespassed on their land away from that now and the police in the western region have arrested seven persons for allegedly uh, robbing some galamsey operators at mosia sunia san Kregua. the seven are said to have robbed the illegal miners of their gold bearing sun at gunpoint let's get more updates from uh, Benjamin Peters, who has uh, a lot more and is now reporting. According to the Western Radio Police Commander, that is DCOP Alex Quenu, uh, four out of the armed robbers were the first to have invaded the premises of one small scale mining company known as one of small scale mining companies at uh, Aston Kruger. And they managed to beat up the security man who was uh, on duty at that time. It happened around 6 p.m. So he was beaten up and they managed to, to, to do away with a quantity of black gold concentrates valued at about 35,000 Ghana cities. So the, 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 some of the people around managed to report the incidents to the police as well as the members of the community watchdog committee who in turn also uh, together with the police mounted up a roadblock around 10 p.m. So at that time the police saw the, the, the guys coming. But, uh, what happened was that the three who the other three uh, were hiding somewhere with a vehicle. So the four, after succeeding in uh, making away with the uh, black concentrate, called the other three who came around with a vehicle and conveyed the rest of the team together with the items stolen. So they were they were bolting away when when the police chanced upon them during the the, the roadblock. And further questions revealed that these are indeed the uh, armed robbers who. who uh, uh, partake in that uh, incident and then they also upon further invest investigation interrogation admitted that they have done the act and they revealed their high uh, which is a cemetery known as the Athena cemetery so they did they talk to the police to the cemetery and the police were able to retrieve a hidden pump action gun a locally made pistol as well as three knives and some uh, mobile phones and a talisman so they have since been brought to the second year police command and according to the, the just a uh, uh, regional police commander uh, investigations are ongoing and they will be dealt with according to they will be dealt with according to what has happened you remember that uh, the previous uh, catch of arms that we show here some of the armed robbers were jailed 55 years mm -hmm. 55, 55, yeah. I remember 30, 25. Yeah, that was 120. Yes. You, so this one, we are very serious with them. We are very serious with them. We cannot allow them to have their own way. So that is that. Let's head now to the Eastern region where we are told that fires raised down the Ofwasi office of the Ghana National Fire Service in that region and it's unclear what might have triggered the fire but a source at the station attributes it to a burning bush close to the offices. Edwin Kofisian has more. Uh, the incident happened uh, that was last Sunday in the evening around 9 p.m. and according to him they all vacated the station. Uh, that is the usual practice they do there because he says they are understaffed, so they are unable to operate uh, the mandatory 24-hour uh, shift that they're supposed to do. So uh, currently they do the 12-hour shift, that is from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So after that, if there is any fire outbreak, uh, don't expect any fire service 
uh, officials in the area to come to your aid. Mm. So, 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 so the interesting bit is there was a fire outbreak at their own office and they were nowhere to be found. Exactly. They were nowhere to be found because they do not operate the 24-hour shift that they are supposed to, to do. So uh, a source at the fire station told me that uh, the fire occurred when a burning bush close to the fire station uh, actually extended it, uh, you know, the damage to, to the fire station. And that is why the fire station as well uh, caught fire. So uh, the source also told me that when the fire officer, officers were called, they were nowhere to be found because some of them uh, do not live uh, in the Ofwase community. They live outside the Ofwase district. Some live in Oda and surrounding town. So uh, that is what uh, happened in Ofwase. Okay, so I, I want to know the extent of damage now. Is it such that the building is completely out, as in there's, there's no way they can even operate uh, in that particular facility? Unfortunately, the building is a private residence they are operating from. Uh, you know, they do not have the official uh, office. Okay. Currently, they are building it, but they've not completed. So somebody, uh, you know, a good Samaritan has offered uh, his building to the fire service to operate from. And as I speak, the building is completely uh, gone. It's been raised down completely. Mm. So uh, <laughs> they lost everything except for the uh, fire engine that is the tender okay. uh, which they usually park at the district assembly uh, premises in of all right well director in charge of regional safety for the ghana national fire service in the eastern region adomati tells joy news that despite the incident his outfit is more than capable to fight fires in the region um yes uh, i can say in authority that indeed there was a fire which affected our office at Opwase, which was uh, commissioned three months ago. Um, let me use this video to correct an impression. Mm. Uh, the burden was not for uh, a private person, it was for the assembly. That was their old starter before they left for the new one. So the old place was given to fire service to operate in temporary, while they are also constructing a new one, which was supposed to be commissioned anytime soon it's, it's almost at the completion stage so uh, indeed there was a fire and uh, the regional command immediately set up a investigative team and uh, they visited the place and uh, we are on our investigation so for now i can say that the investigation is ongoing however uh, we can't say that because there was a fire when there's a fire we cannot respond the fire engine is there the men are there should anything happen fire service will be able to respond. Uh, currently, we are operating from the assembly. We have been giving the down floor of the assembly, the new uh, office they have uh, commissioned for the assembly. So we are we have been giving uh, as a temporary uh, you know office until the new site is uh, fully completed. Uh, according to the DC at the you know uh, at Mansi district, uh, he assured the service that by ending of March a new area, uh, office will be completed so that the firemen will go there and then, uh, continue with their operations. Why is it that you couldn't respond to this particular fire? Oh, the firemen, when they were called, they responded. But, uh, you know, uh, fire, when it starts, uh, it doesn't wait for any, anybody. It, 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 you know, it progresses fast, depending upon the combustible nature of the building. And uh, looking at the place, uh, there were six offices. Two were being occupied by the assembly. They were having their uh, waste beams and other materials in uh, two of the buildings, which were under lock. So uh, looking at the combustible nature of those materials, uh, probably if the fire should start from that uh, end, it, you know, you can imagine the, the, the extent of damage it caused to the whole structure. Mm. So the firemen were able to contain by preventing the fire from spreading to other adrenaline, you know, uh, uh, buildings as well. And, not having part of the area as well. So they responded and they were able to, you know. Uh, How come the Ghana National Fire Service unit uh, in the Eastern region does not run the 24 hour service? Uh, uh, that is not how we operate. Per our modus operandi, a fire station is being run 24 7. So a fire station is not supposed to be run 12 hours or less than or, be, or, or below 24 hours. So the so, men were. So how deployed. come it's being run as such? 
That's why I'm saying that the, the, the regional command did all that he could to make sure the men were sent there to man the place. So for such a you know instance, uh, it is also left to us to also investigate, okay. so that we can prove further to see who did what. Then we'll be able to you know come out with the uh, the, the whole uh, this thing. Uh, oh, okay. Let's now head to Parliament, where Finance Minister Seth Tepe is pleading for more time to enable him furnish Parliament with detailed factors that led to the closure of the cocoa processing company. The minister has been responding to an urgent question on the issue. The leadership of Parliament has, meanwhile, been deliberating on whether or not to allow the finance minister to update the House on operations of some microfinance companies in the country believed to have duped its customers. Joining me live now over the telephone is Parliamentary Correspondent Elton Brobe with a lot more on what has been going on in Parliament today. So, Elton, uh, tell us really whether or not uh, the Finance Minister has now been given the go ahead to, to talk to Parliament about these microfinance companies. Okay, gentlemen, he's done with his presentation on the floor about the operations of DKM and other microfinance companies uh, in the country. Uh, but what is happening right now on the floor is that members are debating as to whether to go into an in-camera session because some of the questions they have uh, can best be answered by officials of the Bank of Ghana. Unfortunately for the Bank of Ghana, they have no audience on the floor of Parliament in an open session. Uh, they can only uh, be called upon to respond on the floor in an in-camera session. So the motion uh, before the House uh, is to whether to allow uh, the House going into an in-camera hearing so the Bank of Ghana can fully uh, response to some of the issues uh, that, that will be raised by members of parliament. Mm -hmm. That is what they are debating. By the presentation of the finance minister on the operations of our DKM and other microfinance companies, uh, the finance minister has told the House in its presentation that DKM was granted license to operate as a savings and loan company in October 2013. But within the period that they operated, they violated all the uh, laws, you know, governing uh, operations uh, in the savings and loan sector. Now, when the Bank of Ghana drew the attention of the Financial Intelligence Center uh, on the, about the operations of DK and, uh, and the fact that they had violated all the relevant laws governing uh, this particular sector, they discovered that they had collected uh, an amount of 115.2 million Ghana cities from, the post, from, from, from their customers. Now, out of this money, only 10.8 million Ghana cities was found in their account when FIT went uh, into uh, their case. Now, further investigation by the Financial Intelligence Center revealed that 77 million Ghana cities out of the uh, deposited money had been diverted into DKM subsidiary companies. And for now, the investigation is still ongoing. But what has happened is that some property belonging to DKM microfinance has been taken over uh, by the state, uh, while uh, managers of these companies, including uh, God is Love, uh, Justin Motors, and the others, are before court responding to issues of fraud. Because the reason why he did not touch what God is love and the other companies is to the effect that they operated as a fan club and not as a financial institution because they had no certification from the Bank of Ghana before they commenced uh, what has now been termed as a fraudulent deal uh, that squat them some money for, for which reason they are in court responding to, you know, a uh, case of fraud against them. Uh, so for now, among the measures that they have instituted to prevent this from reoccurring uh, is strengthen the Bank of Ghana's supervisory and monetary role. Also, I'm sure you're aware that currently in Parliament, there is a depositors Protection Bill 2015, which is awaiting the consideration of the House and then uh, subsequent approval. What the Finance Minister is saying that once this bill is eventually passed, it will, it will, protect, it will protect depositors in the event of what has happened relating to DKM and other microfinance companies. Interesting there, Elton. But uh, I, I want to go back to that particular issue of the uh, closure of the cocoa processing company. I mean, which question triggered uh, that, uh, that that response we were anticipating? That probably never came. Did, did that response ever come? It, it, it did not come. As much of as this is an urgent question filed by the Member of Parliament for Father's Daughter a few years ago. So you wanted to know the factors that led to the closure of the cocoa processing company limited, uh, which actually happened. Uh, in January, just last month. Now, the minister, the finance minister, in his response to this question to the parliament, that he has yet to be briefed on the factors. As a matter of fact, he summoned an emergency board meeting together with the chief executive officer of the Ghana Cocoa Board. He, so he will be in a position to respond directly to the question when he's briefed. And, uh, and this obviously did not go down with members of parliament uh, who, 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 who actually accused the minister of not doing much to get uh, the needed information to parliament. But the speaker intervened. He's asked for more time to go back and consult with uh, officials of the Ghana Cocoa Board 
and the board so that you can come back to the house and brief the house. Also, what is mentioned for a fact is that uh, in the 2014-2015 crop year, Ghana uh, imported 15,000 tons of light crop cocoa beans from Cote d'Ivoire. And this, you know, uh, went to some of these cocoa processing companies in the country. Many thanks for that update. Parliamentary correspondent Elton Robert bringing us details from today's proceedings in that August house. You're still watching this today here on the Joy News Channel on Multi TV. Stay with us because when we come back, we have a lot more stories for you. Some market women. Uh, in the Upper West region of uh, this morning, they actually demonstrated over, over the appointment of Dr. Gandao as the Upper West Regional Medical Superintendent of Fixed Alarm. Join them in that particular demonstration and now reports. You remember uh, what happened uh, uh, a fortnight ago uh, on the appointment of Dr. Barnabas Gandao as a medical superintendent of the Upper West Regional Hospital, uh, who uh, the nurses and doctors at the hospital uh, were not really happy about. And so uh, last week, uh, there were a series of situations at the hospital. But today, they decided uh, to take the demonstration uh, into some special streets of the municipality. And then uh, later, they presented a petition to the Duplicate Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Mohamed Musebu Mohamed Alpha, uh, who uh, took a petition on behalf of the Upper West Regional Minister, Al Haji Amin Hamid Suleimani. Simple put, the demonstration today. Uh, the spokesperson, the man, the name is uh, Felix Figaro. He stated that they have no class with Dr. Barnabas. So they believe that he's a competent uh, doctor. They have no doubt about his quality uh, of serving the hospital. But they are saying that hard work, uh, loyalty, and also sacrifice are to be, uh, to be paid. And so they are rooting for Dr. Fofier because Dr. Fofier has been in the region since 2007. He has been working as a gynecologist at the hospital uh, up to date. And so that's, that's what they are saying. So now they have given the authority, the appointing authority, 72 hours to repair that decision. Uh, if not, they will advise themselves. And that's what the demonstrators have said. So, so they've been demonstrating this morning? Yes, uh, they started a demonstration, unlike the demonstration that they had last week, uh, who was only many nurses and doctors. But I can report to you that this one is different. Uh, because market also members of the Ghana Division of Disabled also join them, and then uh, other people uh, who are friends of Dr. Peter Pukupoki also join their work on. So they move through some principles within the one municipality before finally converting at the Upper West Region Board meeting council, where they presented a petition to Deputy Upper West Region Minister Dr. Hussein Mohamed Alpha. And so Deputy Minister he took a petition. And advise and thank them for the peaceful demonstration that advise that they should go back uh, to work uh, because they provide essential service to people so that after uh, they will look into their property. We can now return to that story of the Joint Teacher Unions questioning the basis of data put out by the Director General of the Ghana Education Service at a recent press conference announcing that the uh, government does not owe teachers any salary nor outstanding areas of uh, qualified teachers. Now, the unions uh, have described these, these claims as untrue. The unions also describe claims about fake certificates as baseless, baseless criminalization of their reputation. They, however, emphasize that until all arrears are paid by the end of February, they will embark on a nationwide strike. Christian Adaipoko is president of the National Association of Graduate Teachers. It is indeed very sad that by the end of this press conference, we would have exposed the untruth in the said press statement. We will begin by touching on the issues of salary arrears to newly recruited teachers, those on promotions, re-engagement, and reinstatement, which our Director General erroneously claimed that they have all been paid. The big question then is, how Director General can refer a list of 27,000 teachers to Fair Wages and Salaries Commission for their action on the 12th of January and still claim that these teachers have been paid on the 1st of January. The fact of the matter is that Ghana Education Service has just submitted documents of 27,000 teachers 
to the audit service after two years of inaction. On the issue of fake documents, including fake certificates, we find the assertion a baseless criminalization and defamation of the hard-won reputation of a lot of affected teachers. If these teachers are fraud, as he seeks to imply, then why are they still at post? Let it be noted that majority of the teachers affected by this unpopular policy of non-payment of arrears beyond three months have been placed on payroll, have been paid their three months of arrears, continue to receive pay every month, and continue to perform their duties as teachers. If these are fake, as he claims, why continue to entrust the future of our children in their hands? Why are they not arrested? It is on record that, one, the BNI has inspected teacher certificates at least two times last year. Two, the Public Service Commission also did a nationwide audit of teachers' credentials. That was last year. Three, the District Directorate of Ghana Education Service also carried out an audit of teachers' credentials last year. Four, the Control and Accountant General's Department also carried an audit last two years ago, the last two years. Five, the Ghana Education Service headquarters, led by the IPPD session, also carried an audit in 2014. In spite of all these, ladies and gentlemen, our teachers who are now crying out loud were not found culpable. So on what basis is our Director General saying they possess fake certificates? And why should we, why should they feel bad nuts, if any, be allowed to inconvenience the good majority? Let's talk about mental health now. And the National Mental Health Authority is awaiting uh, the passage of a legislative instrument currently before Parliament to enable them to set up a tribunal that can handle mental health cases brought before it. Chief Executive Officer of the Authority, Dr. Kwesio says, speaking to my colleague Mama Vyogo Soboji in an interview, impressed on members uh, members of Parliament to fast track the passage of the bill in order to minimize attacks by mentally challenged persons in their country. We are going to have a mental health review tribunal. And by the way, you started the process of the committees. We are getting nominations from, the, from various institutions. Then Mental Health Review Tribunal, they will be like a quasi-high court, where if anybody's rights are abused, they can hold the person, whoever is abusing their rights, hold the person and ensure that you don't continue to abuse their rights. Where sanctions need to be given, they can provide. So these are structures that have been laid. Once you have them, then you begin to see activities. Then, for instance, you begin to see that mental health patients on the streets will no longer be there because we have taken them for treatment and then returned them to the community. Uh, has the Chief Justice agreed to the special tribunal that you mentioned? Well, that's in the law. So Parliament passed it. So what we need to do is the process of implementing or establishing that. So we are going to liaise with the Chief Justice, the judicial uh, services, to make sure that this is done. But the law is says it a so. national tribunal, or this, it, this is one that is also replicated across the country? You will have a national tribunal, but you will have members in the various regions. So at a very short notice, notice they can mobilize the members in the community, in the region, to uh, adjudicate on a case on behalf of the national tribunal. So, so cases it's, such as what? For instance, uh, let me give you a typical example. Somebody is admitted to the psychiatric hospital. And the person thinks that, no, I didn't need to be admitted. In fact, I'm not a mental health patient, and you are wrongly and forcefully admitting me. Mm. The patient or the relative can appeal to the tribunal. The tribunal will quickly, within 24 to 48 hours, assemble, get a team, a panel, to look at the case. If the patient really does not, or the person does not really require to be admitted, they will say, release the person, because he does not need to be admitted. If he has to be admitted, then they will tell the person that, yes, you are justifiably uh, to be admitted. Yeah. Or somebody may have been brought by the court for uh, us to, to, to assess and report. We have done the assessment, and the person is still there, and it's happened. There are some people that 30, 40 years at the psychiatric hospital. 
brought by the courts. They are well, and the courts are not coming for them. You've written a number of letters to the courts. They are not coming for them. So these are people who are perhaps on trial for some offence, uh, who have perhaps pleaded that they are mentally challenged or... Uh, they may have been seen to be mentally ill. Mm -hmm. And then the court brings them the court brings check them, them and, yes, and report and them, back to yes. us and tell us if they have a mental problem or not. And we, we admit, we, we assess and we realize they are mentally ill and they cannot stand trial at that time. So we have to admit and treat them. So we admit, we treat, let's say, two weeks, one month, two months, they are well. So you write a report back to the court that this person you brought, he is well. Please come for him to continue the case. And they are not coming. It may be a murder case, so we can't discharge on our own. Or a major offense, we can't discharge. How many of such people would you say are in your facilities? We will have about uh, 50, up to uh, f between 50 and 100. If you go to the psychiatric hospital, Accra, there is a ward called uh, a special ward. If you go there, of about 160 patients there, about 100 are such cases who don't really need to be there. That will be the responsibility of the Mental Health Review Tribunal. We'll come in, manner, manner ones, they will authorize us to discharge them. Major ones, they, they will force the courts to come for them. That is a crucial um, kind of so body that we require. So we have about 100 cases unresolved because the persons at the center of the investigations or the trial or whatever it is are in one of these mental facilities of ours. Not, not themselves, but you mean they like the prosecutor? No, they are not there. But they, no, mm -hmm. I'm saying the people ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, who yes, are yes, yes, either yes. accused precisely. or defending or something like that. Precisely, like. precisely, and they are there. And that is there. As I said, there is one guy who has been there for about 32 good years. A murder case, actually. Murder case, he has a major condition. Well, since you don't know him, I can tell. Major condition because schizophrenia. A murder case, murder the, the mother. Was brought, he was obviously unwell. We admitted him, we treated him, he's fine. We have written reports upon reports, 32 years. Out. So even you can imagine. The court that saw him, the prosecutors will no longer be there. They but he's capable transfer. of standing trial today. He's capable of standing trial now, and he's there. But because it's a murder case, we can't do anything about it. And I was the chief executive officer of the Mental Health Authority, Doctor Kwesi in an interview there with my colleague Mama V. Osu Abwaj. You're still watching News Today here on the Joy News Channel on Multi TV. Time now for some business. With uh, wow, well, time now for some business. And time now for some business. And the Importers and Exporters Association said it's had that secured permission from the police to go ahead with its planned demonstration at the Tema Harbor on Tuesday. The association is de demonstrating in protest against some new government initiatives at the country spot, which it says are only taking a negative toll on the operations of its members. It cites the high import duties imposed on some foodstuffs by the new ECOWAS Common External Tariff System, as well as the excise stamp tax policy set to be implemented from the 7th of March, among other concerns. Sam Sinasaki is the Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association. Uh, we are not fighting with government. We are just telling government some of the plight that I've just made mention. And so if government look at it, it is very sensitive, and government knows very well that it will not even be fine for his president the president to be in parliament when we are also in, in, in at the harbor, and the harbor is a strategic area for government, which I do know, because government get a lot of revenue from there. I think government ought to have called us now before it's too late on 25th, yes. But do you have clearance uh, from the police to, you know, you have to inform the police? Oh, of course, yes, yes. We have we have had clearance with the with the, with the police. We, you know, we are going to demonstrate in Tema, uh, so we have written a letter to the Tema command. We have had meeting with the Tema regional police command. Uh, I think last week Friday, and and at their roots and everything was approved. I mean, we are very unique people. We when we got there, they know. Oh, as for important as for association, they always demand their their uh, press room their demand. Uh, they are not violence demonstrators. We are, they are, we are professional bodies, and business people are not violence people. They are just come to tell government that uh, some of them have brought their cargo, and with this 20% increment, with this 35% increment, it has it, it is making them, running them jobless, and it's going to create more unemployment. Now that the f power flotation has just come out, and got, people, business people want to struggle some more, this thing has come and to make them uncomfortable. It's even more heater than when we're having power fluctuation.
After our date came out, that this uh, we got to know that His Excellency the President is also coming to 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 to, to Parliament to, to do the State of the Nation address. But His yes. Excellency should be aware of this impending demonstration that should put a hit the Tamaport come 25th. Uh, we would be very glad if government put in steps to see us tomorrow, today, tomorrow, and to tell us something better, and for us to see that yes, something is on paper, something, something seriously something that will bring the tempest down that will actually make people go to the port and could can clear their 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 their, their goose and it will not catch the mortgage and rent then why not we will be able to look at it but as we stand now yes we are very much aware that president the president will be in parliament on 25th uh, but we will also be at the port to also deliver our uh, state of uh, demand on on certain taxes that we will want His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana before he even get to Parliament, <laughs> he would have got the news would have hit him so hard. Some of the areas that the importers and exporters association, headed by me, would be putting across. And finally, some Ghanaians, com Ghanaian companies are advancing moves to exploit the opportunity generated by the rollout of the digital broadcasting migration. The companies have established factories to manufacture set-up boxes as well as the digital TV set for both the local and West African market. More in this report. This has been possible because under the digital transition, all analog TV sets would require set-top boxes to be compliant. The Secretary to the Digital Broadcasting Migration Committee, Edmond Fianku, explains to Joy Business there's a bigger market for these products because they can be exported to neighboring countries. For digital TV, you can package more than 20 TV stations on one frequency. There are some of our neighbors who only have in terrestrial analog only like two channels or three channels. I can speak about Cote d'Ivoire and uh, there are some, that has only about three uh, terrestrial channels. So the moment they switch on a digital channel, they have to fill it with more uh, exactly, it creates opportunity for content producers to go market uh, because I know West African countries where who watch a lot of Ghana TV over satellite and uh, uh, so the, there's that affinity and uh, our creative industry can really exploit that opportunity. One such local company, Super Info Solutions, has already set up a factory to start manufacturing set-up boxes by next month. Grant Apia, a senior sales and marketing officer. We have built an assembly line that will be able to assemble in the set of boxes and also be distributing in, in Ghana as well as West Africa. Actually, we so actually have two boxes. One box is called Ghana, that's the one for Ghana. And uh, we've done another one called Diwa, and that was called uh, Digital West Africa. And that one we are targeting the entire West African market. And then um, we're hoping that uh, we'll be able to draw some good attention once we get out of Africa. Okay, so definitely this is a huge opportunity for Ghanaian companies like yours. Very, very huge. And I think we, they need a lot of support so that because all the West African countries will be depending on Ghana for us to supply them because most of them are now about to enter the face of the, the transformation itself. So they'll need Ghana to guide them. And I feel more businesses will need to out to jump in to fill in these big, 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 big markets. GN Electronics is also looking beyond producing set-up boxes to assemble digital TV sets for both the Ghanaian and West African market. The general manager, Marisa Susan Fim has also been speaking to Joy Business. We partnered with international manufacturers and we started assembling NCA certified receivers in Almina last year. So we have here a product that is assembled in Ghana. Um, we've also done something for Ghanaians. So we have a manual that is in local language. So we have Tri Fanti Nga. Uh, for the users to be able to learn how to operate the set-top box. In a few months, uh, we will start assembling televisions. Those as well will be certified by the NCA. So we're working with tertiary institutions locally. Uh, we're working with communities to employ and train and truly build the skill set for an electronics um, assembly industry. How Aside the production of set-top boxes and digital TV sets, TV content producers are also expected to sell more, not only locally, but outside. Just like the Indian telenovela Kunkumbagia, exclusively telecast on Adum TV channel on Multi TV. And on that digital note, we end business. But you can join me at exactly 1 to 1.30 for more on the marketplace. My name is John Kojo Amwaku. Thank you.
Well, a very good afternoon to you. You're still here on News Today. Let's talk sports. And we're still talking about the positives from match day one of the Ghana Premier League. And Akwa Heart of Folk has revealed raking a hooping 61,000 Ghana cities gates proceed. That's an amount which they had uh, they last had some five years ago at the Accra Stadium. Now, we can hear from spokesperson of the club, Opariado. For the money that we were able to make from the gate um, when House of Hope played in New Ebbi is um, 61,706, which is the highest we've had in about five years now. Apart from any game that you play with Kumasa Santi Kodoko, that sometimes you make more than this. No other team that you play that we've been ever been able to make this amount. So we are thankful to the supporters. We hope that the next time we get back to the Grass Sports Stadium to play our next home match, we will get better amount than this. So we still stay with our crowd hard to folk and a board member of the team, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklu, has called on the followers of the club to give massive, uh, massive support to coach Kenichi Yatsuhashi. Now, Hearts made a flying start to their campaign with a 1-0 win over New Edibiase at the Accra Stadium on Sunday. Now, coach Kenichi Yatsuhashi has since been trending for all the good reasons and the followers of the club have lauded the Japanese-American who many heavily criticized his appointment as coach of the club. Dr. Tamakulu, who also criticized Yasuashi, wants the club to back him to do well in the league. I must say the coach has done well. Uh, I was a bit critical when he, he came in, but um, as I said earlier, he looks like somebody who is a long-term coach in the sense that um, it will take some time before the boys will get to know exactly what he wants to impact uh, to them. But I must say he's, uh, he's quite been uh, consistent. He's built the boys physically well and uh, they are gelling nicely than before. And uh, I would say more grace to his elbow. This is the time for all phobians, all phobians to come together as one family and support our boys. So that was Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklu. He's a board member of Accra Hearts of Folk. Now, Barcelona's South American front three of Lionel Messi, Neymar and Luis Suarez, you can also call them the MNS. Well, they've scored a staggering 91 goals so far between them this season. Now, Argentine Messi has 27. Uh, Brazilian Neymar also has scored 23. And Uruguayan Suarez has notched home 41 goals this season. Impressive uh, for the youngster there. Now, Barcelona are currently top of La Liga, eight points clear of Atletico Madrid in second. So, can Arsenal stand this team as they face off at the Emirates Stadium this evening? Well, yeah, I'm sure if you're an Arsenal fan, you will say yes. That'll be it for sports here on News Today. My name is Benedict So Enjoy the rest of the news after this short commercial break. It's time to talk entertainment here on Joy News today. Now, the much anticipated movie Amachi Dede, uh, which stars actors like John Dumelo, Majid, Kali Boss, Kobe Run, among others, is expected to hit cinema soon. Ahead of that, we visited the set and we spoke to some of the cast who shares uh, their experience on set. And rolling, scene 10, Dede relaxing, LS take one. Action! Is this your first time doing this together? No. No. <laughs> All right, so let me ask. Before you two come on set, did you have to like bond out there before you are able to do what you're doing? Or it's like because you're professionals, you're able to do it just like that? Well, is um, Calibus has to bring what he's best known for. And I have to bring what I'm best known for. So it's bringing this world and this world together and then encapsulating it and point it out. 
Okay, that's the scientific term. So breaking it down, capsulating, like offer cap, no I say swegum, so capsulating, yes. So it's just like um um the water in Majid is the cup, so I'm <laughs> filling in so we <laughs> we come up with the best. But yeah, it's it's our first time and mm. my first time. Mm. He's like thousand times with others. Mm. Yeah, so it's my first time acting with Majid. But how does it feel? Working with him. Work, I'll be say. My whole family member knows about it. I mean, it's 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 a nice experience. Um, to me, it's it's been a learning experience from me from the one with uh, Calibos in China, uh, which I had the opportunity to act with John Dumelo. But now, <laughs> it's the Ghana Chris Brown. <laughs> uh, it's the Ghana Chris Brown. No. Oh damn it! It's the Ghana Chris Brown, Majid. So yeah, it's to me, it's a blessing. He doesn't know, but. <laughs> I know it's a blessing. I've always had a very strong bonding thing with um, with Calibos, you know. So it it wasn't surprising to be on set for us to bond like this. I mean, even offset, we are we play and we fool around a lot. So I mean, it's it's like we are filming, but we are not filming. Yeah. But you, John, I mean. And that'll be all for joining us today this afternoon. My name is Kwabna Chenche Henebwat. Remember, there's a lot more news when you visit mydoorline.com. John Marco comes up next with the marketplace. Many thanks for your company.